Welcome to Some Guys Garage. Today we're going to take a look at volt sticks, beeper pens, line voltage detectors, non-contact voltage detectors, whatever you want to call them, doesn't matter. Um, they are small battery powered devices that when they get close to AC line voltage, they light up or beep or make, uh, make you aware if that circuit is energized. So good for checking things like extension cords or light bulbs or wall outlets, and especially when you're inside an electrical panel to make sure things are not energized before you stick your hands where they don't belong. Now, these are only part of being safe when working with electricity, so uh, make sure you know what you're doing and don't ever work on a live circuit. Uh, no matter how much the electricians might say, ah, 120 volts, no big deal. It hurts, it could kill you, don't do it. So I have four different volt sticks here. I have a bunch of them, I've collected them over the years. They're thrown into various different uh, bins and bags and tool drawers and things like that. And just all of them are a little different. And I thought I would go through a few of these to maybe help you decide or see how some of the features work. So the first two here are both from Fluke, Fluke being kind of the industry standard for any sort of electrical testing equipment. And in particular, this is the 1ACA version two, and this is the 2AC. Um, they both have slightly different feature sets, but work essentially the same way. Starting with the 1AC, so this one actually has a power button, and when you turn it on, it gives you kind of an indicator, a couple blinks there that, hey, this thing is actually on and working, the batteries aren't dead and it also has a beeper in it. So it both visually shows you as well as audibly tells you that the circuit is energized and there's a couple of little blinky lights there every once in a while to show you that it's still working. The next one, the 2AC is a little bit different. So this one's actually always on. It does have a button to battery check, but you don't actually have to turn this one on. It's always working. The maybe downside to this one is it doesn't have a beeper. So you have to see it working. You can't hear it, but a couple different options from Fluke. Next one up is from Gardner Bender. This is probably one of the first ones I've got and they're actually quite cheap, 10, 20 bucks at most. Um, you can usually get them in a package with the little AC um, plug testers that have the ground fault uh, checker as well. This one, to use it, you actually have to press and hold the button. When you press the button, you can see it beeps and lights up just to show you that the battery is good. Um, and it generally has worked quite well. And then the last one here is from Sperry. This one again has a button, this one locks on. So once you press the button, it turns on. Press the button again to turn it off beeps and lights when you actually turn it on. And this one has kind of a tiny, you can sort of see it here, tiny flashlight. So if you're poking inside of an electrical box, you can hopefully see what's going on. Um, it's kind of a nice feature in that sense. So otherwise, fairly simple, visual and auditory signal on this one with a lock on button. Visual and auditory on this one, but not a lock on button. This one, no auditory, but always on. And this one is a visual and auditory with a power button as well. All right, and to show you how they work, I have a standard IEC power cord here just to extend things out. And we'll start with the flukes. The one thing about the flukes that I found and make them useful in some scenarios, but not in others, is they need to be very close to the live thing that you're testing to actually activate. So really more so I think for tracing circuits, like, hey, is this specific wire live or not? Compared to potentially these other ones where these just need to be in the general vicinity, more or less, and they'll activate right away. And I'll show you how that kind of works here. So kind of starting with the 1AC here, as you get close, you need to be within millimeters to activate it. And if you stick it in the ends of the things, sometimes it won't even pick up there, right? So eventually you might, uh, if I get it on the hot side here, eventually get it if you stick it in far enough. I'm sure there's a bad joke there somewhere, but it isn't the most, um, let's say, sensitive to picking up the actual voltage. You can see even if I get on the cord, sometimes on the other side where the neutral would be compared to the hot, it will or will not activate. So if you're trying to find a specific wire, that's great. But if you're just trying to see any energy whatsoever, not as good in that sense. And the 2AC is very similar. Um, so you can see if I do one side or the other here, the one side does light up, the other doesn't. Like it does have to be that close. And similarly on the hot side, you do have to get it in pretty far before it'll pick it up and won't just beep in the general area. Um, sorry, not beep, but light up. But then moving over to these ones, the gardener bender, you press and hold, like I said, and if you get close enough, you don't even have to get it in there and it'll go off. And similarly, um, on the line here, you're pretty much, you know, wherever it is within say a centimeter or half an inch, it'll start going off. So a little bit more sensitive to the field. And then same with the Sperry here. Um, this one's probably the most sensitive of all of them. As you can see, it keeps beeping even an inch or more away. Um, so it is the most sensitive of them. This is great if you're just trying to like make sure, hey, everything in this box is dead before you stick your fingers in. Whereas these, like I said, are better for line tracing. 
Anyway, so if I were to make some recommendations here, um, potentially look at the flukes if you are doing a lot of tracing or trying to find specific wires in a panel or things like that. So where you really need to hammer down on this specific line, whereas the Sperry and the Gardner Bender and a lot of them like that are good for general area, make sure you're safe before you go into a panel. So tracing and safety, I guess you could say, although they're both really safety devices in the end, to make sure that the line is dead. If I were to recommend anything, these are probably more for the homeowner and these are probably more for the electrician or person doing troubleshooting in maintenance and things like that. So they're handy to just have a few around, throw them in bags and make sure you're safe when working on electrical. Anyway, that's all for today. If you have any questions about these, let me know in the comments below. If you aren't already subscribed, please consider it. And as always, thanks for watching.